Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. King were talking to the youth today, he would tell them don't let rap music be your guide and the perspectives that are set down to the individuals that society has hoisted up for your leadership. Let your leadership come from your church and those that are standing for something because now we have, as I said a little bit earlier, we have Bart Simpson as the president and Beavis and Butthead as the main administration. So with them for the leadership, our youth are in deep trouble. And not only is my message to the youth, but also to the parents as well for them to again take their place of leadership and to train a child up in the way they should go that when they are old, they will not depart from it. things and I won't talk long but when we talk about spiritual things you know it's like a seed the soul and when you put a seed in the ground in order for the seed to to grow it has to thrust its roots into the earth and cling to the earth for its nourishment but all the while that seed is growing away from the dirt and it's growing towards the Sun in the same way that we raise our children and we nourish them in this world, but we don't want them to become entangled in its materialism and in its sickness. We want them to grow away from this world and into the spiritual vision that our ancestors entrusted us with. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at time of challenge and controversy. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. made that statement some time ago. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Richard. Well, guess what? We're going to be paying tribute, and if you're familiar with the uh, with that, that particular theme, you probably have already been. We've already kept a, uh, um, uh, if you will, uh, the history of uh, identifying that that uh, that theme was, has been always has been going on here within this particular area. Uh, ba basically headed by a gentleman by the name of Ken Berry, who's been in this community for a number, number of years. And trust me, he's gotten a number of people uh, involved in, the, in this particular issue, recognizing Dr. King and the march, or better than that, uh, to keep alive the dream. I guess that's, that's the theme, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, of, of freedom. Uh, of the of the program in its entirety, I'm excited about it. There's so much to be said about it. He said a tribute to the life of, and, and and legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and commemorating the 50th anniversary of the 1963 march on Washington D.C. And I'm seeing, I'm sure you've seen a lot of footage uh, between now and that time and whatever. But let me put it this way: here in Portland, Oregon, here in the state of Oregon, I'm going to tell you something. There's a there's a group that has organized the efforts. It's going to sort of bring you up to date, talk about that history, and just bring you up to date, and do get involved. He'll give you all the all the all the ins and the outs, if you will, how to get involved, 
uh, who, who are some of the, uh, the participants, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and on and on and on. So with that, I'm just going to introduce Ken. How you doing? It's a blessing. Oh. Uh, it's an honor to oh, be here. And Ken. thank you for being here. Well, hey, thank you. Well, you know, way. you're one of the shoulders that we're standing on, and that, that's, that's just a model that we use all the time, that we not only stand on the shoulders of those who have passed on before us, we're standing on the shoulders of those who are among us. And you're one of those folks that we truly admire and appreciate. You know what you have done in this town in the city in the state and in the nation well ken thank you by the way and thank you for that those remarks but again thank you and all due respect uh, without you guys and in fact i've seen you for the years when yes you've been so I, I remember when you first started this piece yes. you got my point but not, or it really is an asset to not just the community in northeast portland but all oregon yes, yes. all oregon yes. has been a bit of a participant within this organization so right up front we look why don't we just go on and we're going to take a short break we're going to take a short break and I'm going to give the gavel to Ken, and we're going to come back, and he's just going to fill you in on the whole issue of keep, keep alive the dream, oh, freedom. We'll be right back. This is our history. I said it before, what you've produced is my family's legacy. And I'm not just talking about my mother's side and my father's side, but even for every cousin and niece and nephew and auntie and uncle that I have, their family is a part of this tribute that you brought together for the last 30 years because we're all from the same community. Too often our history is lost. Too often we don't emphasize our history. And, and we don't want our history to be lost, stolen, or strayed. The things we want to do is make sure that we are preserving as much as we can. Herb Cawthorn, Michael Grice, and myself, we would meet in his basement and brainstorm what could we possibly do to make sure that we're preserving our history. Our first goal was to preserve African-American contributions in American culture. What could we possibly do to involve young people and people across the whole board as far as uh, cultural backgrounds concerned? Say, let's bring folks together. It gives them an opportunity for all of the civic uh, officials, uh, the state officials, the mayor, the the governor it gives them an opportunity to buy in as well, to buy into African American history, to buy into our community, to to express their satisfaction with uh, and their commitment to Dr. King's dream. And let's bring speakers, let's bring choirs, let's bring groups. And we have so many people that are involved across the board, not just in Portland. We have people from Eugene, from Salem, even as far up from Seattle, Washington, that come down to partake in the program. I'm talking about performing arts groups and speakers, crossing all the cultural, all the political lines to making sure that we are working in cooperation and in harmony with one another. We have thousands of pictures and we have an overabundant amount of, of, uh, of videotapes that we're really working towards making sure that we archive. So it's important that we make sure that we archive it as much as possible and provide as much clarity about how to access this information, particularly for young people. Anybody mm -hmm. that's been living in the city of Portland over the last 30 years and even before that, if they had history here, they'll be able to find it in your archives. So it's very important to my generation that we have that gift to give to our children. I know that it's, it's definitely a gift, and I know that, uh, that we're definitely watched over, and I, I feel the presence of those who have passed on before us still watching over us and guiding us through this path. As far as sponsors are concerned, we are reaching out for more additional sponsors. But We not only stand on the shoulders of those who have passed on before us, we stand on the shoulders of those who are among us so that you know even though we don't communicate every day with each other you know the spiritual connection mm -hmm. is always there Just, uh, I tell you, just a moment ago, uh, we wanted to first of all thank uh, Mr. Bruce Bazaar for having us here. And as we said, uh, we not only stand on the shoulders of those who are passed on before us, we're standing on the shoulders of those who are among us. And I'm honored to have several guests who have contributed so much in this city, in the state, and on a national level as well. And uh, I couldn't think of a better group, and I want to thank Teresa Refford for her coordination uh, to, to, for this program today. And, and uh, the first guest I'd like to introduce right here is a young lady who I happen to have known for a year. She's a principal, and one of the things we're going to be doing with the program this year is that we're going to be using young people, trying to encourage families 
to come together. So we're encouraging young people from across the board to bring their entire families as we celebrate and regain that connection that we had with family years ago. So first of all, welcome Tamala Newsom, who is principal at Rosa Parks Elementary School. Congratulations. I know you've done a lot of work uh, in that area. You have a wonderful uh, husband who's also a principal in Portland Public Schools, and we're honored to have him here. And as I'm moving down the line, well, you know, uh, when we talk about, you know, our past and our history, as a fellow who uh, happens to have his church right around the corner, but I grew up with him. I hope that doesn't you know, hurt you at all, man, to say that. But uh, we grew Absolutely. up together at Jefferson High School, and he's not only a minister, but a person that's known throughout the community for his work with young people, gang outreach, and he has an excellent program that we're going to talk about, too, okay. as well, too. Okay. is Reverend Charles, Charles Hunter Thank is you. our other guest. Thank you. Um, I should also mention the far end is a good gentleman of mine who basically his mother and my mother yes. used to talk every <laughs> single solitary night, regardless of my young coming up when I get home from school. His mom had to have a conversation with me. Where you been, boy? Uh, and my mom would say, hey, all right, get on and get on. You need to be home earlier and all the rest of that stuff. But anyway, she, his mother and my mother best friends. We're honored to still have our friendship, Mr. Roy J. And Roy J. is, a, is the director of the African-American um, Chamber. Chamber of Commerce, a business person. Yeah. He has a multitude yes, of, uh, <laughs> of just opportunity business things going on. So I would like to start, first of all, by saying, what, what does the Martin Luther King program uh, mean to you? Because as we think about bringing young people in, as you know, our theme this year is Oh Freedom, mm -hmm. Oh Freedom. And we're continuing celebrating the civil rights movement, but not only the civil rights march, but also what has been done here locally. Because a lot of people don't know that even though I'm not, Martin Luther King came to, to, to Portland, and, and thanks to Teresa and thanks to other people who are basically uh, uh, gathering information, we're going to be doing the show a little bit differently this year. Instead of just having performing arts, which we support wholeheartedly, we're going to be able to tell the history. And we're using video excerpts, thanks to AJ Wan and some others who are going to be working with us, we're going to do video inserts talking about not only national, but our local contributions, like Reverend John Jackson, for example. Right. Uh, Shelly Hill, mm -hmm. just to name a few. I know you know a lot more. Mm -hmm. But just start with, uh, what, anyone can start. What do you think about this 50-year this, this uh, celebration, and uh, what does it mean to you? Well, I'm just, on a personal level, I'm very excited um, to see this program uh, that has been in our community for so long. And I like the idea of the new format and really reaching out so that not only has it been in the in our community as long as it has, but it will continue to be in our community. Rosa Parks is happy to show up. We have an invitation for our new Bravo Youth Orchestra. They're going to open up. They're going to open up. And we are just excited because we know that their parents will be there in support of them uh, having a place on the program. And we'll encourage them to stay throughout and, and be a witness to all the things that have been planned this year. That's what the purpose is, to bring you know schools together, bring parents, bring mm -hmm. communities together across the, the line mm -hmm. so that we can really move towards the, the family unit more yes. so. Charles, you want to say something about what it means to you? Because you've been part, if I may say, we, we'll go back to the Soul Assembly at Jefferson High School in right. 1968. Right. Don Barnett and uh, right. the, the, I remember um, uh, the, the Bruce Hepburn Smith brothers. And all Bruce, of them. Yes, yes, yes. And you guys, basically, yeah. the history behind that particular program prior to the Civic Auditorium becoming right. um, um, remodeled, mm -hmm. uh, Jefferson High School was asked to put the Soul Assembly there. You right. Remember the Soul Assembly? Oh, yes. It was, ne it was a, a program that basically touched the whole state. Yes. And you guys were in high demand. So we thank yeah. you for the work that yeah. you guys did. And we, we did that program at Jefferson High School. Um, uh, that was the year that the Civic Auditorium opened up. And at that time, I think it housed about 3,500 people, and we had about 5,500 people that day when we did the opening for that uh, Jefferson High School Soul Assembly. But first of all, I want to thank you for your vision and World Arts and what their vision is uh, in doing this these many years. Um, I was just thinking the other day that if ever there was a time that we need to make sure that our young people understood what has been done for them uh, and learn to appreciate uh, the people who have paved the path of the road yes. and have sacrificed so much to get us to where we are now. I think that day is, and time is now. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm excited about um, your vision and this new way of addressing this this year and incorporating the young people 
yep. and making sure that they understand mm -hmm. uh, what has happened in the past. Right. Hopefully this will propel them to do more in the future. And let me clarify something too. It's not my, my vision or World Arts vision. Right. It's everyone's vision because right. our model is teamwork. Exactly. Makes, makes the, the dream, dream work. And if we don't mm -hmm. do that, yes. I mean, we, we could not have made it all these past 20 Absolutely. years. Roy J, yes, the boss yes. with the sauce. The boss with the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> what comes to your mind when you think about what, what, and thank you for your support because we couldn't do it without our sponsors. And Roy J yes. has been a, been a, a continuous sponsor for many years. years and we, yes. we thank you for that as well. well. My pleasure, Kim. My pleasure. You know, we grew up together. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. Many, many years ago. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think what comes to mind is the fact that, uh, you know, this, this is part of our, our history. This is something that we need to pass along, not only to the folks that are here, but especially more important the young kids that don't, that are lost. They, they have no idea. You know, when we were coming up, we had no idea about a lot, a lot of the, a lot of our own history. You know, they, mm -hmm. they taught us Greek history. They taught us everything, mm -hmm. but the, but mm -hmm. us right. thing. That's and, uh, you know, this is, this is something that, that nowadays, you know, I, I've talked to some people from Missouri and, and Alabama where they actually learned black history and they knew what it was actually about. Mm -hmm. You know, nowadays these kids learn about, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Pookie, Ray Ray, Jay Z, uh, or whatever the name, stage <laughs> names they want to use, but that's not what we're talking about, right, you exactly. know. And um, all all the people that have went before us, and the people like you said that we we stand on their shoulders. I mean, even to this day, thing the most important ones are the educators. Right. It's not the basketball players. Right. It's not the rap artists. Exactly. At the end of the day, if you don't have an education, you can't move forward. Key. It's true. Thing. I mean, we see them all day long, all day long. in in court, mm -hmm. on the street, mm -hmm. thing, and they wish that they would have just stayed in school. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, of on the street, talk about your program, <coughs> Clean Slate. Project Clean Slate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not laughing about it. It's just that, you know, I nobody expected this thing to Absolutely. become so so gigantic and so so big uh when did it start in the... to july 9th 2005 okay. i felt like okay. i felt like a mother giving birth <laughs> <laughs> and this was started by the african-american chamber chamber of commerce which is still according to the business journal the fourth largest chamber in this region i mean we've got we've got a mul multitude of members that support the things that we do um and this was this was uh back in the day when harold williams was was yes, was with yes. us and, and um and I had this idea in the middle of the night of I didn't want to do another annual event, mm -hmm. you know, giving people awards and a slap on the back and all these corporate sponsors because, you know, they're giving us money and they're participating. But I wanted to do something that was going to be different. So I called Harold up at 1.30 in the morning and pardon me for, for trying to imitate Harold. <laughs> What's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? I said, Harold, I got this idea. And let's see if we can do a bigger foot, footprint okay. in this town. Right. And um, nobody told us no. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we started we started from uh, working with our, our little advisory board and went to the DA's office, the sheriff's office, the police department. Everybody thought this was a good idea, but nobody really had the money to do it. So mm -hmm. we just we just took the entire Multnomah County Courthouse, mm -hmm. believe it or not, mm -hmm. and moved it to Portland Community College mm -hmm. on a Saturday mm -hmm. thing to service 500 people. Wonderful. 3,000 people showed up <laughs> around the block for 10 hours. Some of them flew all the way back from Connecticut I trying to get that. their driver's licenses back. Uh, we had a lot of terms and conditions all to this thing about, you know, we're just not going to help you get a driver's license back. We want you to become better, more productive citizens. We're going to help you expunge mm -hmm. some minor criminal records, sure. uh, get you back on, on track with child support and things of that nature. Thing. And uh, from there, um, after the first day, it was we just knew that it was we were onto something, wow. and um, uh, we've had as many as eighteen thousand people waiting to get into the program mm -hmm. thing since then. Okay. But um, we've okay. um, we've got a a success rate of eighty three percent. Wonderful, there. wonderful. So Very good. it's it's just the way that we administer it thing. So. Um, let me ask you this. I understand you have a fundraiser coming up, too, in support of Project yeah. Clean Slate. You want yeah, to talk our, about that? And yeah, our, prepare to put a uh, slide up on Yeah, our fundraiser, uh, we, most of the time, you, you don't see us around asking people for money, even mm -hmm. with our chamber. We don't run around trying to solicit uh, membership support, even though we we have a pretty pretty solid base. But every year we, we use some kind of um, a, a mechanism to help not just raise money for Project Clean Slate, but we raise money for a bunch of other mm -hmm. organizations and things of that nature. And I used to have these little events at my house all the time until mm -hmm. I got to the mm -hmm. point where it was just 
too overwhelming for the neighborhood and stuff. In fact, you you attended one. You know, mm -hmm. was, you, you parked 15 blocks away in order to get up the hill. But um, uh, last year um, uh, we moved it to the to the convention center okay. thing, and it's basically called the Roy J. Spam and Velveeta Holiday Open House because that's what we that's was it. raised on Spam and Vel Velveeta. Thing. And people say, "Is there any Spam and Velveeta service?" And no, absolutely not. But it it reminds me of of, of our of, of of course, yes. upbringing. So um, yes, indeed. Uh, so this year, last year, we were fortunate to have uh, Mary Wilson from the Supremes, okay. who came and uh, and performed an outstanding show, okay. thing. And so uh, this year, uh, we've stepped it up even more. We've got the entire Motown uh, Hitsville review that's going to be performing at the convention center. And so, um, you know, it's to help raise money for Project Clean Slate, okay. and then we're going to also give money to some of these other organizations after we settle up all the stuff at the stuff at the end end of the day okay thing so then we want to get the contact information and maybe we can put that up on the screen as well if uh, we're ready in the, in the, in the yeah, there yeah the, 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 the website you can just go to www.projectcleanslate.com that's okay. that's where the there's a little icon up there okay. and um, right. and so or else you can get tickets online at Tickettomato.com. Tickettomato.com. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> right. that's, right. that's another enterprise owned by Patrick Lamb. Patrick Lamb, of course. Yeah, of yeah. course. So, yeah. uh, I'm for the uh, We try and keep money in Oregon there we all go. the time. That's so, what we're uh, trying to do. Uh, but it's 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 a good good event. You know, we we try and do it every year to do something mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. Thing. So, uh, mm -hmm. and we're just we're just glad to be able to do it, and we're glad to be able to service. The, the thousands of people that, that really needed to get a second chance. This sure, is yes. not just getting a driver's license, but there's nothing better, Ken, than to see people that all of a sudden they've got their license, they've got to be right. able to get some things expunged, they can go actually go out and get a job, mm -hmm. uh, and get better housing. You know, there's there's this is the gateway to a lot of other opportunities, yes, mm -hmm. and people don't realize if you have no driver's license and you don't have any valid government ID, exactly. you can't even get on a plane. Exactly, yeah. you're a prisoner in your own own town mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thing, and nobody appreciates going to the bank and having to put your thumbprint right. on the back mm -hmm. of a exactly. check when you get 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 ready to cash a check. So, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, Multnomah County, uh, with the wisdom and and the direction of uh, former District Attorney Mike Schrunk, and now it's under Rod Underhill. Um, looked at this as being an opportunity that okay. that they they couldn't pass up mm. and the fact that um, the program became so successful uh, they moved us directly into room 602 of Multnomah County Courthouse okay. where the only outside agency sure. quote unquote sure. that has their own yeah. courtroom yeah. but everything is administered from our Northeast Portland office except for the for the court court dates and things mm. of that nature that they go through but um, uh, it's um, it's been a blessing. All right. you know, we've awesome. had support from awesome. City Hall, from state government, from even from President <coughs> Obama's mm -hmm. people that have that have uh, fund, funded us in the past. Well, I've seen people, and I've also heard people testify yeah. how they've gotten their job is through Project Clean Slate. So uh, we mm -hmm. commend you, yes, and mm -hmm. applaud you for the work yeah. that you're doing. And, yeah. and if someone wants to contact you directly, is there a phone number you want to give? They can uh, call. They can call five zero three. Okay. Two four four five seven nine four. So we're going to see office. you at the program this year. Uh, we hope. Yes. And yeah. Hope that provided I'm. Yeah. yeah. Provided that you're in town. In town. You know, and we've yeah. been talking about the program, and perhaps we probably should give the date. And again, the 29th annual Keep Alive the Dream, a tribute to the life and legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Thanks to um, we want to give credit to Teresa and and the production team who came up with the theme Old Freedom, commemorating the 50th anniversary of the 1963 March on Washington. So again, we're trying to celebrate, bring our families back home. Correct. Reminisce not only on our past, because like Martin Luther King said, if we don't know our past, we're doomed to repeat, repeat right. it. So, so speaking of repeating, what would you like to share in regards to what, what you're doing at your school? Because uh, Rosa Parks, I mean, you, you, you have a tremendous, tremendous building there and a uh, wonderful yes, staff and, and students and community. What, what are you doing? Anything special for the King program this year besides performing at the uh, program on Monday, January 20th? Yes, we, we very much um, encourage and our teachers do a great job of taking advantage of the day to really or the week, the time around leading up to Dr. King's birthday to share with uh, our students that mm -hmm. legacy. We have uh, about 50% of our enrollment, our population is African-American. But of course, Dr. King was more than about just African-American, he was about people. Mm -hmm. And so this is good for all of our community mm -hmm. to know and celebrate. 
we do a celebration kind of in combination with Dr. King and Rosa Parks because mm-hmm. her birthday, some people may not realize, is February the 4th. So it follows very closely uh, to Dr. King. And because we are Rosa Parks School, we make sure that our children know the history also of what Rosa Parks um, brought to the table and her work during the civil rights years. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so that's very important to us to keep the history and to make sure that as we are teaching our children that we are providing culturally relevant instruction. Mm -hmm. So in other words, instruction where kids can connect to, because when I see myself in the instruction, then I can connect to the instruction that Mm -hmm. I'm receiving. Mm -hmm. And this has been a focus, this is one of the focuses through the Courageous Conversations about race Mm -hmm. with Portland Public School, and then each school is now working uh, along with the district, but still independently of moving that along. Mm -hmm. Because we can go somewhere, we can get training, we can come back, but if we let it sit and don't utilize it, we're going to lose it and it will be for naught. So at Rosa Parks, one of the things we do is we spend time around courageous conversation. We spend time around book studies, trying to get better, trying to uh, change our practice to reach all of our students because we know that some of our students, and especially if our boys are color who disengage, it is essential that we keep them engaged in yes. their learning. They're mm-hmm. babies. They have to have yes. this foundation mm-hmm. to go on and be mm-hmm. successful. Mm-hmm. One of the things I'm probably most proud of this year is that we are also, um, with with, uh, the help of some community folk that uh, someone put me in touch with, uh, you know, they kind of threw me a bone, I think, to make me go the other way. And I said, that's okay, I'll run after a bone if it's about my kids. Um, Met a man by the name of Seth Truby. Seth is now the executive director of the Bravo Youth Orchestra. Wonderful. We have all of our um, kindergarten mm-hmm. and all of our uh, our uh, first grade mm-hmm. are receiving violin twice a week. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Then we is have that early morning before school. That is school? during the day. Okay. Okay. During the school day. Okay. So we know we have a captive audience. Okay. Um, but uh, our second and third graders are actually getting um, orchestra. Okay. Forty mm-hmm. of them okay. that have signed up. Parents okay. have been very supportive, and they meet two hours every day, five days a week. Okay. Every day they're school, they're in their uh, after school working on um, learning the violin, the viola, and the cello. Okay. All right. um, their first performance is coming up on December the 4th from 6 to 7.30. Uh, it is amazing what these children who have never held any of those instruments or performed on them are doing. It just blows my mind. I'm so excited because we we went from a school that had no music mm-hmm. and we are very grateful for the Monoma County taxpayers to pass the arts. So we actually do have halftime Excellent. music. So all of our children are getting music. Mm-hmm. But this program is a nonprofit, so it would have been there regardless. But we are glad it's in it Rosa Parks in conjunction with the having music for the first time since the school has been built Good. and we're in our eighth year Wonderful. so we uh, have a teacher who just started a fifth grade jazz band mm-hmm. so we look to hear from them in the future all right good good and good. just leveling that playing field and giving kids opportunities to um, to bring the arts in because that also supports so they're learning the songs of the civil rights here and as your group comes and open up we're, we're honored you know as part of the uh the program to not only broadcast on live radio kboo radio mm-hmm. if i may mention that but also we're broadcasting on the World Wide web through portland public schools web and also anthem church is where we're holding the program mm-hmm. on january monday january 20th and also on television services um which is channel mm-hmm. 28 too and also mm-hmm. it's going to be uh, here tape delayed right here i believe i won't give the channel because i think it's still to be determined at this point in time but with that in mind, I'm just co-hosting, and I see that Donnie Adair has arrived. And so with, with that in mind, I would like to see if the uh, studio could, could prepare the first video. We're going to take a little quick break, which is kind of an overview about what we have been doing with World Arts Foundation. When we talk about standing on the shoulders, there's one thing that Dr. Prophet told us many years ago, and it always sticks in my head. It's not so important what happens to you. What's more important is what happens 
within you. Mm -hmm. And I saw Dr. Prophet a couple of weeks ago, and I was just reminded about that. And you know one of the things uh, that uh, Dr. Prophet told me to be sure and tell, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, he told me to be sure and tell Ron Herndon mm -hmm. that I love you. Mm -hmm. Because when he was superintendent of Portland Public Schools, mm -hmm. Ron Herndon and the Black and Night yes. I made sure that there's yes. things done to help kids that he yeah. might not have you otherwise sure were right done. about that. So uh, right. again, standing on the shoulders, <laughs> not only those who have passed yeah. on before us, yeah. standing on the shoulders of those who are among us. Absolutely. Roy J, I want to thank you. Charles, mm -hmm. thank you. If yes. one of you can stick around, yes. I'm going to move uh, aside and let Donnie come in. If you can stick around a few, few minutes, that would be yeah. great. Okay. You're watching your 4 o'clock news on KGW News Channel 8, where the news comes first. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. And that is Dr. Martin Luther King delivering his most famous speech on August 28, 1963, at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. And today, when we celebrate his birthday, a federal holiday, hundreds of thousands of people across the country are honoring his life with a day of service. It's part of the president's nationwide call for service project that gets people working together to solve common problems. News Channel 8's Pat Doerr spent the day checking in on a number of these efforts right here in our area. Pat? Well, guys, lots of folks gave of their time today to try to make the world a little bit better place. It's the kind of effort many told me that would make Dr. King proud. At the New Beginnings Church, a day-long celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. featured spirituals from Danny Osborne and friends and many other speakers. It's a diverse gathering, which is why the lead pastor is so pleased it's in his building. It's so special to us because we're a church that embraces all the different cultures and diversity and that's been our dream to build a church that looks like heaven so they live in a nation throughout the day the reminder went out do something to make the community better for all that it is not just a day of rest but a day of remembrance and also a day of action at the boys and girls club in northeast portland dozens of college students work on books they're part of an effort by more than a thousand students. It's really special because uh, Obama got inaugurated today and we have MLK Day. It's really special because we're supposed to bring a message that we're not only able to help people out, but we should be able to. And at New Beginnings Church in East Portland, hundreds more gathered to sing and remember the late civil rights leader which made us wonder about that dream of people being judged by the content of their character and not the color of their skin. How is it going in our area? I think we've got a ways to go, but I think it's events like these and places like this that really begin to break down the walls and see that uh, continue to progress. Many who lived through the struggle of desegregation see the change. It's getting better. The world I was born into was completely different. And uh, I'm sort of part of a transition generation. And now I see younger people around. I like what I'm seeing. A hopeful thought on the day we celebrate what would have been Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s 84th birthday. We shall overcome. Deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome. Donnie, thank you so much for being here, sir. Thank you. It's an sir. honor. When we talk about me. standing on the shoulders, I mean, not only from uh, um, high school, but also from working with the original MLK program in 1985, which started actually at Whitaker Middle School. And Donnie, I know we've worked you hard. Over the years, you said, well, I'm not sure I'm going to do the next year. But, you know, instead of Donnie quitting, he's brought his family on board. You That's know, right. so again, we're trying to pass this on to the young folks. We're trying to basically share 
what has been given to us. But just like I think, I think it's in the Bible talks about the little section where one, where, we, where too much is given, much is expected. Right. And so we, we're honored, Donnie, that you stuck with us with all these years of world arts and the community work and your work in civil rights with the city, with the state. I mean, it's impeccable the, the work that you've done. Okay. Well, thank you. I, uh, I want to thank you for inviting me back to host the show again this year and work with the production. And your family. And my sons, <laughs> Donnell and Kenny, will be working with us again. Kenny backstage, Donnell is the co MC. I think it's his fifth year okay. MC. And so at some point, you know, we're going to get so old, we're going to have to turn it over to the young oh, yeah, folks. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, but speaking of the young folks, we have Teresa here on the right. side. We're honored that she's been working with us and she's come up with some great ideas for this year's program. Again, you know, we have various producers that are helping us, you know, make the program work. You know, right. we've been fortunate and blessed over the years to have a whole assortment of folks that we've been honored to work with. And Teresa, we're honored to work with you. And, uh, and, and for the people that may have just tuned in and don't know what program we're talking about, we're talking about the 29th annual Keep Alive the Dream sponsored by World Arts Foundation Incorporated. And it'll be held out at Anthem Church, formerly New Beginnings, 172nd and Sandy Boulevard. And it'll start about 11 a.m. and run to 6.30 a.m. And it'll be all these great community leaders will be there. Mm -hmm. All of our schools, many of the schools in the Portland mm -hmm. area will be participating. We'll have choirs and bands from as far north as Seattle, far south as, as Eugene. So it takes on a regional flair as well. Exactly. So this is the program that we're talking about. But it is in celebration of the ideals of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was a leader in our national civil rights movement back in the 60s. Our theme for this year, O oh Freedom, is a recognition of the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington, which, uh, in which Dr. King gave the I Had a Dream speech, which we all know mm -hmm. uh, and love, and is inspirational so many people throughout, mm -hmm. not only our country, but throughout the entire world. Uh, Another thing we try to point out peace. sometimes is the fact that that wasn't the only speech that he gave. And right. one of the things, with, you know, thanks to suggestions by Teresa, and, and Teresa needs to put in, get in here too, but it's just uh, the, the, the other things we're going to try to do is actually have excerpts from other speeches that he has mm -hmm. given, because we only know that I uh, have a dream speech, but right. the other speeches that he gave so eloquently and, and really fits the time too, because even though it's been 50 years, um, there's still a lot of progress has been gained, but also still a ways for us to go as well. Teresa, you want to get, get oh, some yeah. input, please? Well, I was going to say that the focus is actually on the civil rights leaders, even the ones that became that came before Dr. King, because what Ken says all the time about standing on the shoulders, at the time that he gave that speech, August 28th, 1963, he was standing on the shoulders of those that came before him. And when we look at the entire history of the civil rights movement, it actually goes <coughs> back, you know, more than 150 years. So we wanted to acknowledge all of those people mm -hmm. at, at the same time that we acknowledge this anniversary that's just you know came upon us and that we're still within the year of and so I'm just very excited to be a part of this because I'm trying to do my part in inspiring the next generation so that they'll come out and they'll understand the value of who they are their humanity and they'll fight for it so. one one of the things we were discussing the other day is to make this connection not only from the national scene to the local scene here in Oregon, because we're talking about civil rights, and mm -hmm. it seems that to this new generation, a lot of what went on before is foreign to them. Oh, and a lot of them are not aware that Oregon was not a uh, utopia, that uh, this is the only state admitted to the Union with exclusionary laws that didn't allow African Americans, mm -hmm. uh, Negroes at that time, to actually even live here and own property. And that if you did that and you were here on the first of the year, <laughs> you could be uh, required to do work on the maintenance roads, arrested and, and put to work. You could also receive a whipping. Yeah, yeah, which those makes your work even things. more important right, right, because right. a lot of kids are coming up and if they're from somewhere else and they move to the city, a lot of them are saying, what's going on here? What's happening here? And when you're from uh, our state and you don't know your history, then it, it's kind of hard to move forward. It is. And it so is. that's what we're wanting to do. We don't want this to hold us back anymore. We have a lot of talk regarding equity and equality mm -hmm. and civil rights and human rights, but we want to be more than just the talk. We want to start building and, and just complete 
completing the process that it takes in order to implement change. But we if, don't want to wish don't know and where wait you for came change, from, but we want to help be a part of it. If you don't Absolutely. know where you came from, you don't know where you're going. That's right. I mean, you you know, know, repeat I, it. I, the history is necessary. When I was born, the year that I was born in 1950, the city of Portland City Council passed an ordinance uh, banning discrimination in restaurants and, and right. places of public accommodation. Before that, there was white only signs and we white trade only, all in, throughout downtown Portland. Well, in April of that year, the citizens voted down that ordinance See? and made it legal to discriminate against people. That's in my lifetime. But the citizens understood process. They knew how to put things in writing to make things happen. And again, you know, understanding your history gives you a, a, the courage and a blueprint <laughs> to make a difference. Because uh, when I, what I noticed this past year when they celebrated the March on Washington, a lot of people were kind of disgruntled. And they were saying, well, what are we celebrating? What has happened? And I don't think that they saw it because they haven't been engaged in the process the way that you have and the way that Ken has as an educator. And so I think that because of what you guys have done using education and arts to bring this program together and having access to the children, having access to the corporations, you have an intrinsic opportunity to create those evaluations and to push that movement forward. Well, not only does this program bring together people to celebrate those values and ideals, but it actually gives community organizations a chance Absolutely. to come together in our dream village. Absolutely. And disseminate information about what's going on and how people can get involved and so it's important for people who can come out and get the program live to be there at Anthem Church which Absolutely. is a wonderful facility oh, it'll see 1600 people but we also have then the conference space and a big dream village as we always do where vendors come to sell their mm -hmm. wares and community organizations and public organizations mm -hmm. have many booths with information that can be of value to you so that you can get involved in the struggle to truly have equality in this country because the struggle is not over people you know we're yeah. looking at health care issues and all these different things and you can get involved your voice really can be heard if you get involved so it's an opportunity for us to come together on january 20th 2014 at anthem church for the 29th annual keep alive the dream program sponsored by the world arts foundation incorporated and and i Ken, I love the fact that you and I have worked on this project for the last 29 years. This will be our 29. Decades, huh? And uh, <laughs> it's a big, big program. 50 to 55 different right, speakers right, right. And, well, yep. and acts. Just like I said a little earlier, it's just, and it's I can't just, say it any, any clearer except the fact that it takes so many people mm -hmm. to make the program work. It's mm -hmm. not one individual, it's not even World Arts. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it takes many individuals who come together mm -hmm. and and what we try to do is to make sure that we're listening we're hearing folks at the same time everyone has a, a voice in mm -hmm. regards to making the program work mm -hmm. and but when you when you total the the program it's about uh, 56 uh, acts, we're including speakers, including uh, participants as far as artists are concerned, and it's, a, it's really a very highly technical uh, management project. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's not. Some people say you just throw a program together, just do it, shorten it. But our goal over the years has been to involve as many people as we can mm -hmm. across the board, and we can't get everybody. We do the best we can, but then there are variables that are beyond our control. But we try to make sure that we get as many people as we can from the schools, from the community, culturally represented, age appropriate, uh, and this, all, all that yes. is, is one of those variables. And one of the reasons we're, we're even at Anthem, we're, we're honored to be there, is the fact that, you know, with the spacing issue, it's open. Because I remember some years ago, as we were becoming older, some of us had accidents walking up the stairs right. instead, <laughs> instead of on level me, land. But... Oh, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. So we're fortunate. And again, we want to thank those people who worked with us over the years. Portland Public Schools and, and uh, you know, Jefferson High School, the Highland Christian Center. We're, we're honored uh, to have that, those kind of experiences. Even University of Portland, you know, over the last 28 years, we've had to, you know, we, we've had the opportunity to right. put the For program For three out. years. Yes, you? exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, I, I just enjoy, and I guess I'll be doing this till I can 
no longer talk anymore, I guess. I don't well, know. Well, you sit down in a chair and do it. I always, okay. I, I always look at myself as the Dick Clark of the King program. <laughs> I was going to say with the video implementations pretty soon, you'll probably be doing it from home. Hi, this right. is Donnie Adair, you know. All right. the technology we have, huh? That's right. Do it on our iPads or whatever. Yeah, do yeah. it from the Bahamas. Well, Ken, as, as a matter of fact, talk a little bit about how the program is going to change a little bit well, this year. Well, well, we're, well, we're doing something a little bit different. We talked a little earlier about the fact that we're not only providing entertainment because World Arts Goal is working hard at the intersection of education and the arts. Right. You know, thanks to, to, to encouragement from Teresa and, 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 and AJ Wan and, and different people, even our website designer, Ellie, you know, who's going to be, be working <laughs> with us. Uh, we're trying to give the program a different flavor so that we're encouraging families to come and increase values within the family, the importance of working together in harmony with one another. Because as you look around, and I can't, you know, as being a music teacher and, and speech and all those things over the years, I can't help but think about the impact how music, television, movies, uh, playstations, all those things have helped shape, you know, our sensitivity in regards to what we feel is real and what is not real. And so what we're trying to do with, with the program this year is use video inserts that not only depict national civil rights leaders, but also our local folks as well. Mm -hmm. We mentioned Shelly Hill a little bit earlier. Yes. We have Maddie Ann Callier Spears. Mm -hmm. We have different people, even like uh, Gladys McCoy, the Commissioner Gladys McCoy, mm -hmm. who that, that we have on video that we're going to try to basically give little excerpts so people don't forget. Mm -hmm. Because as we mentioned a little earlier too, that if we don't know our history, we're doomed to what? Repeat it. Absolutely. So the, the, that's kind of a flavor we're, we're, we're trying to go this year. But it's taking a lot of work and we, we got a long ways to go. We're still building the program. It's pretty much complete, but we, we're still building the program and we're, we're anticipating a very, very power, powerful and meaningful program for families. Mm -hmm. And we're encouraging everyone to bring one. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of access to the program, we, of course, will be on this station. Right. We'll be on the Public Portland uh, Public Schools right. channel. Yep. Yep. Yeah, television services. KBOO Radio, this has right. been really giving a tribute to King for now about 35, uh, about Yep. 35 years yep. or so, and, yep. and this program yep. grew out of their studios, exactly. got too big for their studios, mm -hmm. and that's when you started it 29 years ago. Yep. But let yep. me ask Teresa to talk a little bit about what we've done in the last two years and we'll be doing again to get even more listeners. Oh, um, absolutely. Well, with the, uh, with the technology that they have at the Anthem, we're able to also stream it. They have it streamed on their website, but we've been using social media, mm -hmm. and social media allows us to share the program with people as it's happening. Even where we have tape delayed broadcasting on Portland Community Media, with social media, we're running live. We're sharing pictures, mm -hmm. we're uploading videos, we're tagging people as they're on the stage, and what we realize is that while doing that, using Facebook and Twitter and other outlets, people are seeing their family members in the crowd and saying, oh my goodness, let me get down there. And they're jumping off the couch and coming to the program. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make what sure. Which is we want, right? Absolutely. We want to yeah. make sure that there's plenty of seats filled. Mm -hmm. And if we get a standing room only situation, mm -hmm. then that's perfect. You know, that's but a good problem to have. But some people in reality but can't come. They can't Hospitals come. Hospitals got to go 24-7. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Some people involved in exactly. public safety. Some people involved in public transportation. That's right. We'll have even well, special provisions right. of TriMet right. assisting people people to get to our program mm -hmm. on that day so some people can't get there and they have to work and so we have to reach out using these various media. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I wanted to do a, a shout out to TriMet because not only is Ken Berry on the side of a ton of buses out there that have TriMet drivers, but he's also on the buses that have PCC and he's holding one of our programs. Mm -hmm. And last year when they had uh, opened up a temporary stop for bus number 21, they had so many people riding that transportation on that route that they've actually turned that into a permanent stop. Beautiful. So that's still helping out people in our community, community. even after our program we were still able to extend our resources to people throughout the community and through our sponsorship. We with want to thank John L. John L. Bill for that too. You know, he's right. one of our producers too over the years. Yes, he's been with yes. Since he's he was a little MC guy, for right? Middle school, <laughs> middle school. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, And you see, that's a perfect example of coming back home of having people, young people, involved with our program and st helping to strengthen them and, and vary their experiences so they could go out and blossom. And Absolutely. take the other skills and talents they have. People like John L. Bell, and John L. is the equity manager for uh, TriMet. Absolutely. And that, which is a 
big, tremendous job for That's such a, big a, deal. a young person. But he's highly skilled, you know, comes out of the center Merkley's office mm -hmm. and worked in the mayor's office. And he just, you know, originally was the, the student on the board of education for public, for public schools. schools. Yeah. yeah. And so, that shows how influential you guys are because he, he started with the program as a youth. And yeah. I know that Ken was one of his teachers. But what we're looking at for the, you know, the next 30 years, let's say, is building a blueprint and bringing in youth ambassadors to mm -hmm. learn the skills and learn the trades so that they can go out and start developing uh, their sites towards career development. Mm -hmm. We want them to become a part of the program as volunteers, but we want them to learn from the people that are teaching them how to be career minded and what mm -hmm. type of things might interest them so that they can stay involved in, and continue their education. Because we know in the state of Oregon, we have a, a serious dropout rate but I think that there are vehicles like the World Arts Foundation mm -hmm. and what you guys do mm -hmm. that will help support what we need as far as to leverage them and keep them engaged in school. And you so. mentioned volunteers. Yes, sir. And for volunteers and for anybody who wants general information on this or other programs of World Arts uh, Foundation Incorporated, they can go to worldartspdx.org. That's right. We said that again, worldartspdx.org. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just get information on all the programs we have. Ken, my compliments to you on the new website, the revised <laughs> website that we have. Well, thanks which to Teresa really and, and to Elle for making that, making that happen. Yeah, and, absolutely. And Elle Jones is amazing. I mean, we, we, we knew what we wanted, and it's hard to sometimes share your vision with someone that hasn't been a part of the team. Mm -hmm. But not only have we been able to share the vision with her, we got a new team partner. And mm -hmm. she's amazing. She does all type of media, photography, video. Um, she's great at the web de designs and things of that sort. So we're hoping that she'll grow with us into our new mm -hmm. uh, youth ambassador program and, and become a director someday and help us, you know, teach the children some of the things that she knows how to do. And a lot of high Very quality generous. comes out of those type of partnerships. So the hands on and thank you a lot L for your work on our site mm -hmm. and everybody like Donnie said will be able to go to the site uh, they can download the volunteer forms they can you know pay for vendor tables mm -hmm. for vendors village our PayPal works now so we'll have all of that up pretty soon and we'll make sure that the link is on this uh, show so that you can go there later on as well well one of the things World Arts will do is give you <laughs> opportunities to serve you That's know because right. I mean I started out as <laughs> Well, would you come MC this program? Okay, I MC the program. <laughs> Next thing you know, don't you help us co-produce the program? Okay, I'll help you co-produce the program. <laughs> Next thing you know, would you help fundraise for the program? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm fundraising. <laughs> would you? Would you go on TV? Would you? You know, you and do all but that. that's yeah. the neat thing about getting involved with a program of this nature. As you know, when we sit down and we're producing this program, and we look at all the things that we have to do. We learned all of that in the process of actually doing mm -hmm. it, whether it's working with the wonderful people here at uh, Portland Cable Media and all the technical Media. side, you know, the support that they provide. But we have to learn from them what is it that you need to help us put this program on. Absolutely. And it's just amazing whether you're talking about audio, video, uh, the actual acts that come Editing. on have certain requirements. <laughs> the speakers, yes. you know, everything from developing a program format to the theme to yeah. maybe security. That's the best We've part never had an your... incident you haven't at and... the program. And we have a very involved <laughs> security team okay. where we are working with city, county officials and, mm -hmm. and law enforcement officials and so forth. Mm -hmm. Everything has gone so smoothly. Absolutely. And that type of direct engagement is what has us here now, developing deeper relationships with our sponsors and mm -hmm. bringing those relationships directly to our community, Indeed. which is the value. And speaking of standing on the shoulders, you know, we have a, um, a, a special clip that we're going to close with. But be, yes. be, be, before we get to that, I just want to mention to you, you made me think about Willa Dorsey. That's one of the pieces we're going to be closing with. Uh, Willa Dorsey, the program actually started in May 2nd, 1978, and one of our local television stations here in Portland actually recorded the entire program uh, at New Hope Missionary Baptist Church and aired it on a Sunday, which was two hours and a half, mm -hmm. no commercials whatsoever. Yeah. And at the end of the program tonight, we're going to actually see an excerpt for that featuring mm -hmm. Willa Dorsey and the New Hope Missionary Baptist Church mm -hmm. at that time. And the beautiful thing about it is that Willa Dorsey 
who has passed away still leaves her legacy. When we talk about standing on the mm -hmm. shoulders of, I mean, uh, the, the, the program actually started a little, even before 1985, is when I was working at the uh, local station KGW, my mother <laughs> brought her on board to do a public service program called Let Us Break Bread Together. Mm -hmm. That's prior to television stations actually going off the air at right. 12 o'clock at night. Right. You know, right. at 12 o'clock at night, you know, you turn TV on, no, nothing but buzzing. Mm -hmm. yeah, and right. so Willa Dorsey came on board and, and did a program with my mom called Let Us Break Bread Together. Right. And, and the station basically said, we want you to close it out for us. So right. every night, from 12 o'clock to about 1 o'clock, they gave her an hour's worth of time. Calvin Allman, different mm -hmm. folks in the community, but I would play for whatever, actually did that particular <laughs> program. And we're going to feature I remember her that. as we close yeah, that. That's the last thing oh, man. before yeah. station went off the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was After something After Tom else. Peterson said yeah. goodnight, then you see her. That's right. That's it. That's it. That's, it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So again, right we're, we're honored to have this opportunity. Again, I want to just commend Teresa, and I want to commend all the team for the for the for the making the dream work because it takes such amount of, of, of cooperation and collaboration. And uh, we, we we're bringing we're bringing young people on board too because we okay. we're fortunate. We have about anywhere from 200 to 250 volunteers right. in the whole program that and, we basically and this have year to we're trying to get the young people credit, right? Right, right. Yeah, we're, absolutely. We're Academic towards, credit yeah. for the work that they're doing. High school and college credit. They do a lot, Ken. They do so much. As you mentioned, my son, son's working, and, and one of them, uh, Donnell, who's a co-host, mm -hmm. he's worked at uh, when he was at Jefferson mm -hmm. as a camera operator. Then he worked in the switching room. Mm -hmm. Then for many years, of course, before that, he... Mm -hmm escorted dignitaries right, and right. bands and things from right. the backstage right. then he was a speaker mm -hmm. and then he became uh, right. one of the announcers for us so. three three things that come to my mind as you're talking to because you're triggering other thoughts too is people like lenny edwards mm -hmm. from jefferson high school we want to say a special shout out and thank mm -hmm. you to him for his work another person larry dunham mm -hmm. who was another intricate part prior to being able to broadcast live or even take delay we would actually start the first program and go and do all the post-production. Mm -hmm. Take about 15 hours to edit the tapes to yes. put them on the air. Mm -hmm. When prior to, to Comcast was Rogers. And then yes. last but not least is George Page. 1980, when George Page suggested that the programmers of KBOO Radio preempt right. the, the, the programming and, and dedicate it to talking about the importance why Dr. Absolutely. King's birthday is a national holiday. Mm -hmm. It took us five years from 1980 to 1985 when it became a national holiday, and, and we want to give him a shout out too as well for right. his contributions to, this, to the city. Yes, and his contributions to the city were even broader than that right. with what he did mm -hmm. as a foundation for gospel music. Uh, on Sunday mornings that's mm -hmm. still in evidence today. Yeah, George Fitz, mm -hmm. George Fitz, mm -hmm. that's it, that's yeah. it. So and I was going to say that um, with this year being our focus on civil rights locally and nationally, next year our biggest focus for, for 2015 is going to be all of the history mm -hmm. that we want to talk about and that we remember and that we get to finally share with the rest of the state of Oregon and going back to probably 1864, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me remind our audience again, 365. we're inviting the community to join us at the th 29th annual Keep Alive the Dream okay. program okay. Uh, sponsored by World Arts Foundation Incorporated which will be out at Anthem Church formerly New Beginnings on 172nd and Sandy on the holiday January 20th 2014. Thank you Donnie, thank you Teresa, I want to thank Charles Hunter, Roy J and also Tamara Newsom. We're going to close and thank you, Bruce Bazard, for allowing us to be here today. Thank and you, uh, we're going to close with a video which kind of highlights and summarizes our past. Thank you, and have a great week.
I'm not looking at the clock so right. Thank you, Roy J. Thank you, Tamala Newsom. And thank Carl, you, Charles, Reverend Charles uh, Hunter. Hunter. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. <laughs> Check us out on Facebook. Follow our tweets. Uh, we got a new Flickr page. So if you take pictures at the program, send them to us. We'll add them to the other pictures that we have in our collection. And come out and see us January 20th, 2014 at the New Anthem Church. We're looking for you. Hope to see you there. And bring your family. Yeah, yeah. bring your family. Because if you come by yourself, we're going to call you back. We're going to turn you Turn away. you around. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Thank you so very much. Yeah.